Dr. Weening, I have one word for you. Okay. Plastic. Okay. Enough said. One word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, sir, you. Plastics. We're talking about plastics today. Okay. okay. What is a plastic? And this has really hit the media and everybody's stressed about it, including me. Agreed. Plastics in our environment. Nanoplastic, microplastic. It's too much. The bad actors. Too much. Welcome to Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. Okay, so, so we're going to talk about what it is, why it's bad. Yeah. Maybe if you stick around to the end, maybe we're going to give you top five ways how to reduce plastic in your life. That's right. And we'll tell you how to look at the label to see which ones are the really bad plastics and which ones are just the bad plastics. Oh, no, this has the good plastics. Yeah. There's, okay. Look. There are better plastics. Plastic isn't, we, isn't bad in general. We can't live with it. We can't live without it. Right. So what is plastic? Okay. Well, it's a long chain polymer molecule yep. that is used in just about everything. It's, it's, it's come from, uh, you know, basically it's a hydrocarbon like oil. Right, like fossil fuels. Like yeah. Fossil fuel. So that gets people fired up. Right. It's non-renewable right uh, there. That right. gets people fired right up. Off the bat. Yeah. Plastic really gets people fired up. Do you know how many pounds of plastic were made last year in our world? I do not. 880 billion pounds of plastic. That for me, when I saw that number, I was like, wow. And then they tried to estimate the amount of plastic that ever in history has been recycled. And they said 9%. I thought that was maybe a bit high actually. Right. But that is a staggering amount of plastic that's just ending up just sitting around, doing nothing, taking up space and causing problems. It is. So it why is. did we start to use plastic? We use plastics because it's such an incredible material for manufacturing. Right. You can mold it into just about anything you want. Yep. Injection mold it, blow mold it, or, and it's quite durable and tough. Very durable. That's part of the problem because it sticks around forever. Temperature sensitive or tolerant, right? Yeah, so can, some plastics can be heated. Yes, yes, some can be heated quite high. Yep. Uh, it's lightweight. Yep. Um, and, and it's cheap. It's cheap. It's literally used in just about everything. Yeah, like shocking, actually. Yeah. And we're guilty of it too in healthcare. Sure. Very. Yeah, a lot we of disposable it. plastics, oh, single use plastics. We use it in our syringes, yep. the tubing, um, and a lot of instruments. Even in the OR, we use plastic instruments. I looked up like some sneaky places where you think you wouldn't find plastic. Mm -hmm. How about the inside of a bottle cap? And you say, I'm getting yeah. a glass bottle. Yeah. But for leak prevention, yeah. most paper cups or paper plates, they have a little bit of plastic to make them stronger and reduce a water absorption. Did you know that a lot of bubble gum actually has plastic no, in it? I did not. Like you literally are chewing it, swallowing it, like talk about direct access. Well, canned food the inside of the can. Of yeah. The, the you know the bottle caps? Yeah. The, that little liner inside. And we used to peel those where, I, you, where you'd win stuff yeah, when we were growing it. up. Yeah. You're like, yeah, free coke. I used to collect those. Yeah. Yeah. When I was young, but so yeah. plastic is everywhere. In healthcare, we use a ton of it too, so we need it. It's come, we've come to a point in civilization where we could not live without plastics. Yep, yep. The problem is we are ingesting plastic, yep. and the effects of plastic are being learned to be bad. Yes, we're learning a lot about human health. For sure. So before we get to that, what if, say, you lived in a totally remote rural area, you're like, listen, I'm not buying any plastic, I'm not having any plastic packaging, I'm not drinking out of plastic. Do you think those people even have some plastic in them? Yes. Studies have shown in very rural, remote communities that do not purchase any plastic because of bioaccumulation and water contamination, even those people have plastic. Right, so literally, you are part plastic now. Wow. I read some- uh, I feel like I'm natty. You, <laughs> no, you're plastic. <laughs> no, okay. That, <laughs> You don't need plastic surgery. Okay. It should be plastic. Fair enough. I read in one of the articles that it was estimated that we ingest five grams of plastic a week. Oh, wow. That's a fair amount. That's a lot of plastic. That and, and so how do we know that we have plastic in it? Have they done studies to test up and say, yes. hey, you got some plastic here, yeah. you got some plastic there? There is an emerging line of research that's looking at the effects of plastic. And uh, I found one article that really made me panic. This one's interesting. This is in the New England Journal of Medicine, so you know it's legit. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Microplastics and nanoplastics in atheromas and cardiovascular events. So basically, they looked at patients undergoing carotid endarterectomy, which is where you uh, go into the carotid artery and remove plaques. I remember during residency, my vascular surgery, that was a stressful operation. Yeah, yeah. I remember doing it in the neurosurgery. Yeah. Yeah. Dissect yes. the neck. Yeah. Anytime you're dissecting it. And then you're clamping off kind of the blood supply to the brain for yeah. 
You got yeah. like four minutes. Get it. Yeah. Get it going. It seems wrong. It's, yeah, but it, but it's life changing, obviously. Right. For so what? So what did they find? Well, the pur- your purpose of doing that is to prevent a stroke. Yeah. And they found in those atheromas, in those plaques, um, 58.4 percent had plastic in the plaques. Well, three out of five. Polyethylene was detected in carotid artery plaque in 58.4% of the patients. And other plastics were found in there too. Yep. Plastics in your plaques. So in your plaque, I read an article from 2022 that 80% of blood samples had, had plastic in them. Yeah. They've done similar tests in the liver, in the lung, even in the placenta. Yeah. So, so even your new unborn baby is being exposed to this stuff. It's so, everywhere. So plastic is in your body. The overwhelming okay. odds are right now you're watching this with a bunch of plastic in your body. Okay. Is oh. that a bad thing? I was just gonna say, so why does it matter? What if it just, can't you just like maybe poop it out? Well, that's if it stays in your GI tract, and I'm sure you do poop out quite Interestingly, a bit. Interestingly, there was another study that found 100% of stool samples had plastic. Yeah. In. So you are ingesting it, so you are passing some some of it, but some of it is staying in your body. Okay. Okay. So this isn't the kind of thing where if you've taken some plastic, you're going to die immediately. It's right. not like uh, cyanide or any of the other poisons that will kill you immediately. Yeah. But it does accumulate in your body, and it has been implicated in some health effects. Obviously, cardiovascular effects right. must be related since there's plastic in the plaques that right. we're taking out. So that's number one. Number two would be metabolic health. So obesity and type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance, that has been implicated. And this is because plastics have been linked to things like oxidative stress, free radical generation, inflammation, all these low-grade um, chronic processes that are related to so many illnesses. That's right. number two. I would say number three is, and you're probably guessing it, cancer, right? Whenever yeah. we have these man-made chemicals in our body, we are at risk of cancer because they're not natural. Our body doesn't know how to react to them. It can trick our cells yep. into becoming cancerous cells. So cancer is one of the things that we worry about with plastics in our body. Then number four would be endocrine disruption. When you hear about endocrine disruptors, a lot of times BPA is talked about this, a very specific type of plastic, and this can impact your fertility, it can impact your, your pubertal development, as well as hormone-related cancers, so estrogen-related cancers like breast cancer or prostate cancer. Right. And then the last one would be developmental. Developmental, like right? Like you said, it's been found in the placenta, so it does affect the fetus, so yep. yeah, definitely developmental. So there's still an emerging body of evidence coming out with exactly what these plastics are doing. Yep. But suffice to say, there is some concern out there in the medical community that these microplastics, nanoplastics in our body can do harm to us. Right. On the long term. Yeah, okay? for sure. And we don't know exactly, like we don't know like a safe level. In, and so it's not like, okay, I got my maximum yeah. plastic for the day. I yeah. think all we can do really is to do our best to eliminate it and make other healthy choices in our life to hopefully reduce the impact of some of the plastics. That we right. Have. Exactly. So, can we come up with five things for our viewers that they can do to try and reduce the amount of plastic that ends up in their bodies, in their carotid arteries, in their I, liver, in their kidneys? I would say yes. Okay. Okay, so number one. I would say probably one of the most important things, and I'm guilty of doing this all the time, okay. is do not microwave stuff in plastic container. Okay. The reason is because as you heat the plastic, some of the chemicals leach out quicker. Anytime you're trying to speed up a chemical reaction, if you heat it, it right. speeds it up. So if the plastic is sitting there frozen, there's less likely that some of that plastic is going to get into your food. If yep. you nuke it, it's going to get into your food. And totally agree. And, and my wife, for a lot of the things you do on our channel, she's like, yeah, we, I talked to you about this eight years ago and, yeah. you, and you didn't listen to me. Yeah. And so plastics for sure. So um, not microwaving and not even drinking something warm. So the heat, uh, like a hot liquid, can yeah. actually also leach plastic into what you're drinking. So yeah, limit the amount of heat when you're dealing with plastic. Okay. Okay. Number two, I'd say use alternatives and kind of in this vein, so use things like glass or wood or metal for your storage containers, for your cup, for straw, whatever. So right. try to try to get rid of the plastic rather than just not heating it. Seems obvious. If you don't want the plastic <laughs> in your body, don't put it in your mouth. Okay. I like it. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Okay. Fair okay. enough. Um, I would say the next thing that one of the most important things that I think, and we did this in our house, yep. and most fridges who that dispense water have this, yes. filter your water. Okay? Oh, okay. A charcoal, because these are particles, micro and nano size, yeah. uh, mechanical filtration system will remove a good majority of that plastic. Right. So a charcoal filter system, you can put it on the main line of your house if you're drinking tap water around your house. If you're yeah. only drinking water from one place, put the filter on that place. Yeah. So a lot of- Did you put it in the main line of your house? Yeah. Yeah, because 
I not only get water from the fridge to drink, but like from upstairs for that. From a hose outside in the summer? Hose outside. Now you know you're protected. Yeah. My water. I don't want my lawn to die from plastic. No. What about the dog? Well, who's skin who? I'm sure if we did test the dogs, then I'm guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah. So I put on the main line, but we also have one in the fridge. Okay. I like it. Number four is, is shop smart. So if you are shopping, look for, and you have to somehow use plastic, try to look for a specific kind, look for labels that say things like BPA free. And a lot of them now will document even the tin cans. They, uh, well, if they are BPA free, they're usually going to say it. If they're not, they're probably just not going to address it. Yeah. So they're not going to say they have BPA, but they're just going to yeah. be quiet about yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Let's, well, let's come back to BPA and what it is. And yes. It's risky and this types of plastic colors. But the last one I'm going to say, if you can reduce the single use plastics that 100%. you're using, then uh, that will also contribute to your reduction yeah. of exposure to plastic. Makes sense. There's right. your five. There's your five. Okay. So now in BPA, you mentioned BPA, which is a type of plastic that is really bad for you that yep. we found. And now that's where a lot of products say they're BPA free. Yeah. If you look at the label, they give you the recycling number. Yeah. You know, with a little recycling symbol and a number that tells you the type of plastic it is. Okay. okay? And then num the plastics number three, six, seven are really bad. Whereas one, two, four, and five are not quite as bad. The way to remember that is three, six, seven will make you go to heaven. One, two, four, five might keep you alive. Okay. But no amount of plastic is good, but those are just the worst ones. So we're going to just quickly run through what those are. BPA, you mentioned. Yeah. Bisphenol A. Okay. That is a synthetic chemical added to plastics. It's important in the, in the manufacturing of certain types of plastics. Okay. And it was found to be particularly harmful to human health. All right. That's why there's been some regulation on that. And that's why you're seeing all these sort of signs and symbols and labels that say BPA free. Okay. Okay. So numbers three, six, and seven are PVC, polystyrene, and others. Others, which are other ones that are bad for you. Polystyrene is styrofoam. Okay. We've known for a while now you don't put styrofoam in the microwave, right? Yeah. But those styrofoam cups are particularly bad for you. Yeah. Okay, then the other plastics that are still bad for you, but not as bad, are the one, two, four, five. Yep. That might keep you alive. Number one is polyethylene terephthalate. Check out the big brain on Brad. Uh, two and four are a low density, uh, high density polyethylene. Yeah. Low density polyethylene. Yeah. Number five. Polypropylene. Polypropylene. So those are the plastics that are a little more durable. A little less of them leaches out into a life. High density polyethylene. That's we put. We do. We put that in people. In, in people's knees and hips. We do. Yeah. We do it. We, it's an implant. It's a total hip replacement, total knee replacement, right? You know what's funny is that. It's like a whole, it's like an organic chemistry kind of lesson to no. all this plastic stuff. Yeah. Shout out to my kid who's studying for organic right now. There you go. <laughs> and the, the, you know, the plastics in, in the setting of an implant seem to be safe. We've done studies on that yes. before. We haven't, but they seem safe. I think it's because you're not creating those microparticles that get ingested. It's staying it takes a while to bottle. show up for this because it's such a small thing, right? Right. And right. we weren't looking for them. Right. And then the plastics that we use, those high density polyethylenes, they are so, um, tough now. They don't yep. wear, they don't give off little particles as much as you would think they do. Yeah. So that's the deal with, with the plastics. Yeah. Those are the ones three, six, seven, try and avoid those as much as possible. One, two, four, five. Those are a little better. Try and avoid all plastics. We told you five things you can do to reduce the plastics. If this is so bad that why, why don't governments just do something and say, Hey, we're going to ban Can't all plastic. Do Can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. Everything. The government's made plastic. Yeah. The government has government's made, made plastic. plastic now. And so a lot of governments are working to reduce single use stuff, but at the at the end of the day, honestly, yeah, we're going to ban straws. Like straws are a small part of the problem. So it's, it's the packaging and a lot of the food packaging because of the types of life that we live. Yeah. It almost, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. And we didn't touch on the big islands of garbage floating around the no. ocean and stuff like that. We recognize that those exist and those are a serious problem. Yeah. We just focused on what plastics do to the human body. So do your best. Do your best. These are some things you can do to reduce it. Don't get to the point where you're so stressed out about this. We're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because this is just part of life now. Yep. Okay. Um, but these are the things you can do to try and reduce that part of life that's getting in your body. Now you know. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment, your thoughts on plastic and what you do in your home to reduce plastic use. And no offense to our plastic surgery colleagues. That's a different <laughs> thing. It is. You are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.